Hi, my name is Justin, aka Jeff. This is my head philosophy. Um, so we're responding to a 20 year old male. So, hi Matt, I'm hi. Justin, and we've also got Justin here. Um, can you tell me what happened today? Can I just blow your fat on your hand and um, so I'm just going to do a few vitals, okay? Can you get a full set for me? It's a migraine. Yeah, okay, cool. So tell me about this migraine. Uh, it came, came on like, it's like flashing lights, and I think it's a combination of just dehydration as well. Like, I get migraines. Well, I used to get migraines. It's been a while since I've had one. Okay. And does it feel like the same as before? Uh, it does, but it also feels a little bit different. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Just okay. Um, are you on any med medication for this? Yeah, I, I have Rizomel, which I used to take for me for um, my migraines. And when, and when did this last happen? When was the last time you took that Rizomel? The last time I had a migraine or yeah. last time I took medication? The last time you took that medication. The last time I took the medication. For the migraine, yeah. It was, was I haven't had that yet today. Okay, but when was the last time? It would have been, the last migraine would have been six months ago. Six months ago? Okay, um, I'd like, to, I'd like you to have some, but not now after the finish. Um, natural's not expired, obviously, okay? Okay. Um, but besides that, I'm just going to do the full assessment again, okay? Just to make sure. Right, I'll, get my, I'll get my wife to get it. Okay, cool. Jessica, honey, do you mind getting the rise amount out? I'm just going to do an assessment just to make sure there's something, um, nothing, nothing sinister is also present as well, okay? So, do you have any um, pain other than your head? Do you have any pain anywhere other than your head? No, it's just, it's just this left side of my head mostly. Just the left side of the head? When did this happen? It's just started this morning. Okay. And when I press here, is any pain there? No. Does it radiate anywhere? No, it's just in my, in my left frontal lobe, kind of. And when you look at me, just looking at me, um, do you see any like just the visual disturbances or any flashing lights or anything? No. Okay, can you also tell me those vitals as well? My uh, blood pressure 130 over 70, heart rate of 75, uh, nice and regular, fist rate of 20, uh, BGL 5.6, temperature 36.5. Can you toggle anything? Uh, we'll do a now. Okay, cool. Is it okay if I just hope you should do a toggle? Yeah. Um, have, you been, um, have you been feeling dizzy just before this at all? No. Um, have you had a knock to your head at all? No, no. I probably chose normal sinus sugar. Cool, thank you. Um, so, no recent trauma to the head? No, no knocks, no anything? No, no. Okay, okay. Can you just squeeze my hands for me, please? Give me a big smile. Push down on my hands. Push up. Nice, very good. Have you been vomiting at all? No. Okay. So I'm sa it's safe to say that um you had a you've had a migraine today, right? Okay. Um I'm I'm quite safe telling you at home, but I want you to go see your GP, okay? Okay. So you, there's no need for you to go to the hospital today. But okay. before I um I leave you at home, I'm just gonna go through a checklist, okay? Um could you just get the paperwork for me? Sure. So I'm just gonna go through my checklist. Um cool, thank you. Um headache or neck pain following neck manipulation, just move move the neck a little bit. And does that feel any, mm, any pain? That's good. Okay, that's good. Um, neck pain or neck stuffness? Yep, that's okay. Um, so, and this headache happened three days ago, right? No, it started this morning. It started this morning? Okay, cool. Can um, I Okay, so here, this, there's a number that you can access online, and that'll show us what we've done today. Okay. Uh, how does it feel right now? Still pretty sore. Still pretty sore? Okay, on top of your medication afterwards, we can also give you some um, some of our medication, okay? Okay, that'd be nice. So, I want some paracetamol, hydrocodone, and Canada. Just check cool. that out for me, okay? Cool, this is the information okay. sheet. Cool. So, this is the information sheet, it just has everything to do around headaches, okay? What you should do if there's any um, further exacerbations, okay? Cool, alright. So, it address the paracetamol here, it's in cool. date. Yep. You've got in date ibuprofen 2 cool. and in date Canada. Cool. And are you allergic to anything? No allergies. Okay, cool. Are you over 80 kgs or under 80 kgs? Under. Have you taken paracetamol in the last four hours? No. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to give you um, 1,000 milligrams of paracetamol. There you go. You can also get some water as well. Okay, I'm going to give you 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. And I'm going to give you 50 milligrams of tramadol, okay? Okay. Just take that all in one, okay? And I'm just going to continue with my red flags. Um, you got a febrile. Um, you haven't had any persistent vomiting. Um, no focal neurological signs. Um, and before all this, have you had any um, losses of consciousness or anything? No. Okay, so that's all good. Um, you haven't had recent trauma. And you're only taking... That, that medication for your migraines, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so no anticoagulants. Um, there are no signs of temporal arthritis. Can you just move your hand for me? Cool. Um, you're not pregnant. Um, there's no previous history of intracranial bleeding. Um, there's no family history of cerebral vascular abnormalities. And I'm going to ask you a very personal question, okay? Uh, yeah. Did this happen while you were having sexual intercourse? No. No, okay, cool. So I can rule that out. So those are my red flags, um, my orange flags, um, symptoms associated with sinusitis. But I believe that this migraine is um, different to your usual one, is that correct? That's safe to say? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that, that falls under my orange flag. So I'm just going to, um, that form that I've uh, um, got out for you, um, I advise you to go see your GP in the next 12 hours, okay? He's going to bring up everything that we've done and what we've given you today, okay? So you to bring this? Yep, bring that with you and he's going to pull that up. And he's just going to continue that, um, that care for you, okay? 
um, and in the green flag, so symptoms associated with influenza, no migraine or usual symptoms, and you've got normal vital signs, so that's all good. Okay, so I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of the GP whenever you have the time, okay? Before, before we leave, before we leave, okay? I just want to see you mobilise, just stand up and walk around for me, please. Um, but I'm also going to read that out. The patient has been fully assessed, including a set of vital signs, appropriate investigations, yep. <coughs> None of the vital signs are significantly abnormal. There are no serious animals, illnesses or injuries that have been excluded. There are no red flags present. I've just seen you walk. Yeah. And do you have anyone you can, um, that can look after you and take you to the GP? No, I do. My wife. Okay, that's good. So I, I'll, leave them in their, I'll leave you in their capable hands. Um, and I've given you some information. Okay, so I'm happy to leave you here. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Hi, this is the Love and Back Pain OSCE. Uh, we have Justin here as our patient and Jeff as our outsider. Um, we have already completed a full set of vitals, which are uh, all in normal limits, a febrile. Uh, we have done a sample history and we have explored a little bit about the PQIST. Uh, the next thing I need to do is delve a little bit into a more focused history for, for our patient here with lumbar back pain. Um, so I'll start off. Um, Justin, so we're, we've determined that you have back pain in your lower back. Yep. Um, to me it sounds a little musculoskeletal, but we're going to just uh, I'm going to ask you some questions that are going to help rule out some, yep. some of the more um, uh, severe symptoms. Yep. Um, how has your urination been recently? It's been fine. Yep, so you have no problem urinating, no incontinence. Yes, no. Um, and you've told me that there's no pain radiating to abdomen or up your back, no? No. Um, how about any altered sensations in, in your saddle area, which is no. your buttocks, and any, any altered sensations going down both your legs? No. no. And do you think you could stand up for me quickly and show me that you can mobilise? Oh, that's yep. all. A little bit of pain. All right. Do you feel like you have... Um, Power in both legs while you do that? Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, and the the pain in your back, um, so obviously it's worse when you get up. Is it, uh, is it worse when you lie down at all? Yeah, it's yeah. quite bad when I try it. So, so it gets worse when you lie down. What about when you, has it been keeping you from sleeping at all? Uh, it's a little sore, but I can still sleep, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's really good. Um, uh, that's well, it's not good. But, yeah. 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 Um, so to me, that's an orange flag. We'll yeah. get back to that uh, later on in our assessment. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So. So what I'm thinking now is that I'm going to pull up my checklist, just yep. as, a, as a safe practitioner we yep. need to pull this out. So in my book I have a little bit of red flags which are going to um, just give me an indication yep. to whether or not my treatment plan is yep. appropriate. So we've talked about your bladder control, your temperature, your AP bra, um, you haven't had any rigors or shaking, okay. no. Um, your, your vital signs are all at the normal limits, um, it's pain, your pain doesn't radiate anywhere else except for your lower back. Um, we will be doing a... Um, physical assessment soon and um, you've been well recently yeah yeah uh, so that's really good it looks really good we've got no, no red flags currently until I, I rule out the last one of my physical assessment um, your orange flags here these are just indications of maybe go see a doctor for 12 hours I'll explain yep. that more to you later um, so that is yeah, your pain uh, that's worsening pain when lying down or at night so we'll talk about that a bit later um, but but in general if we look at our green flag on this page um, pain or muscle spasm isolates the lumbar area that's what yep. it sounds like yeah um, so I'm confident with that. Uh, next, my, my next step is to do a physical assessment. So Justin, if it's alright with you, I'm going to get you to lift up your yep. shirt and expose. So looking for any bruising, um, cull and sign, anything like that. Um, if, it, if it's right with you, I'm going to palpate. Just let me know if there's any tenderness there. Any tenderness? No? So not only are we looking for tenderness, um, we're also looking for rebound tenderness. I'm also looking at our patient's facial expression for wincing, we're looking for guarding. Um, and, uh, and also we're feeling for palpating masses or any, any lumps like that. Um, so that's really good. Uh, there's no pain there. No. no. You need to sit forward just a little bit. We're just going to have a look at your lower back if that's right with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. We're looking at your shirt. Uh, okay, so we're looking for um, any rashes, anything like that, any injuries on this back. Um, I'm going to be feeling down your back just from the top up here. Any pain? Any tenderness? Nope. No. I'm just keeping on going down. Just let me know if there's any tenderness, all right? Yep. So, so we've cleared us um, thoracic spine. Now we're going to the lumbar area. No pain in your lumbar area? No. How about if I feel in the muscles around here? It's a little bit sore? Mm, yeah, I yeah. Love it. Okay, if our patient shows a little bit of tenden tenderness in, in the muscles around your, your lower back area. Yeah. Um, so that's really looking really good. Yeah. Um, through our history, I'm, I'm thinking right now that it is a musculoskeletal issue yeah. from the muscles in your back. Uh, Jeff, I'll get you to get some medications out, okay. please. Okay. Just um, some paracetamol, ibuprofen, and travel. When you get that out, just let me know. Um, so what I'm thinking my plan, thanks Jeff, my plan is for you today. I don't think, I'm confident that you don't need to go to the ED today. Yeah. Um, we have no red flags present. Yeah. Um, however, we do have a little bit of an orange flag, which is the fact that you have a little bit of pain lying down yep. and going to sleep. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna um, recommend that you go and see your doctor within 12 hours. Yeah. Um, what we can do for you um, is we can give you some pain relief. Yeah. Um, I have um, um, three sets of tablets there. 
Um, so paracetamol, have you ever have you taken any yeah, paracetamol in the last four hours? Nah, not in no, not the last four hours, no. Cool. Um, ibuprofen, uh, um, you've had that before? Yeah, so yeah. Have you seen anything? No. No, and you've taken tramadol? Yeah, yeah. And you're right with that? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So Jeff, you're going to get um, 50 mg of tramadol for me. Okay, cool. Um, you weigh about the 80 pounds? Yeah. yeah. So I want 1.5 grams of paracetamol and 600 milligrams of ibuprofen. Uh, drug treat that for me and then let me see. Here you go. Okay, paracetamol and date. Cool. Ibuprofen and date. And tramadol and date. Alright, so you can um, take the medication from Jeff there. Um, so these medications will really help you out pain, um, especially since it is a muscular, musculoskeletal issue. Um, so, so the other thing I can recommend for you is to go see your physio as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think physio can really help with, with, yeah. the, with pain down there as well. Um, so just, just uh, when you feel fit, go and yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, more advice um, for, for, for you as well yeah. is uh, a lot of time with, with your lower back pain, um, it's good to mobilize. It's good to yeah. stand up and walk around a bit. Um, so, so that's uh, really awesome. Yeah, if you can, if you can do that. Yeah. The, the longer you sit down, the harder it's yeah, going to get up. Is, yeah. um, so that's real cool. So uh, Jeff, how's that uh, non-transport form going, the ACS form? Well, I think I finished that. Finished it? Okay. Yeah. Just yeah, it uh, so this form here has a little number that yeah. we're going to write on for you. Yeah, um, sure. That allows you to go online and access everything that we've written about yeah. you in the report. And on the back, uh, there's some advice. Yeah. And it's all similar things that we've already talked to you and yeah. discussed with you. Um, so we're going to leave that with you. If you do go, uh, which I we recommend, yeah. if you see your doctor in the next 12 hours, show that sure. to him. He'll be able to pull up our notes. Um, and then this sheet of paper here is a little information yeah. sheet. Um, so that'll let you know um, in, in, anything really you need to, to, to know. Cool. Um, if the pain gets worse, um, yeah. if there's any change in your symptoms, don't hesitate to call us again. Yeah. Um, yeah, go to the emergency department, either yeah. way. Um, the last thing I need to do, are you happy with yeah. the um, treatment plan that I've suggested for you? Yeah. Are you happy that we will, yeah, with the medications we've given you and that we will be leaving you? Yeah. Okay. So before I do that, we'll just check our transport for non-transport. So going through this, um, you meet the criteria for non-transport, which is really good. I'm um, going through our, our, our non-transport list. Um, so. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Best of luck for the future. Thank you. See you. I'm Megan and this is my PPHC Osteo on Hippos Like this. Right, so hi, I'm Megan and this is Matt. Hi. Right, what's going on today? So we were just playing, um, we had a game just before and now we're doing this. Yeah, cool. Um, we were just playing a game before and then after that like, I just got shot, like shoulder into the nose, like shoulder hit my nose before we tackled. Okay. And um, I've just been putting like this, this tissue over my nose and it just it keeps bleeding for like over like 15 to like 20 minutes now. Okay, so it's been doing for, for 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah, around there, around there. Okay, can you just give us a survival story? Yep. Matt's just going to come in and take your blood pressure. Don't worry about me, I'll just keep doing stuff while you talk to me again. Alright, so have you had pressure on it for that long? Yeah, I just yeah. got it under here, yeah. Do it's, anyone... still it's just still good. Sorry, but... do anyone witness it happen? Yeah, all my teammates are around and um, I know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You didn't lose consciousness or anything after no, that? No, I didn't. No? Okay. Right, do you remember it all? Uh, yeah, I remember it all, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is, Matt, when you've done that, can you pass me the course? Or, yeah, uh... I can get that for you. Cool. So what we're going to do is, just to make sure that you've got proper pressure on it, I'm going to have you this. And on the soft tissue part of your nose, I want you to put direct pressure. Mm -hmm. So I just pop you. Yeah. Yeah. So I want you to press about here. Okay. I want you to hold direct pressure on. Okay. Got okay. okay. You don't need any medications or anything? Um, no. no. Definitely not anti coagulants or anything? No. You're not allergic to anything? No. Okay. So we're going to try that for 15 minutes and see if the bleeding stops. If not, we can give you some adrenaline. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. Have normal survivors? Um, no. So we got a blood pressure of uh, 120 on 80, a heart rate of um, 80, and a rest rate of um, 16. Okay. Right. So does that feel like it's stopping at all? Not really. Not really? Okay. Yeah. Temperature. Right, we're going to wait 15 minutes and see if it does stop. Okay, yep. 80 bra. Perfect, alright. So you've applied direct pressure for 15 minutes. Has the bleeding stopped? No, it's still bleeding, I think. It's still bleeding? Okay, so it's like we've still got bleeding in both nostrils. So what we're going to do now is apply adrenaline in both nostrils to stop the bleeding. Are you happy with that? I've already drawn up 9 mils of saline. I'm going to off side to check for the adrenaline. Can you check that, please? The adrenaline, 1 mega, 1 mil, expires 2020. Right, now you're 
bring them up. drop the same in the next one so we can have one in each nostril. Right, so we got the adrenaline ready. So can I give you a big blow and give us try as much pops out as you can? Okay, yep, we'll yeah, we'll Okay. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one up your nostril and as I do it I'm gonna count to three and on three I want you to take a massive sniff, okay? Ready? One, two, three. little break before I do the second one. Okay, let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. You ready? Okay, ready? On three again. One, two, three. Okay. Right, so I'll fly direct fresh again for 15 minutes. We'll see if the bleeding stops. Oh. Um, yeah, it seems that will stop. Yeah, like... Okay. Right, so what we're going to do is, Matt's writing the information down now, and we're going to give you this form here. Okay, yeah. It's ACS form, yeah. and it's, if you would go to your doctors, you can hand in that, and there's a website they can go onto, and you can go onto as well. Type in the numbers there that we've got, and you can find the information that we've written down. What we advise you to do is avoid taking hot showers and avoid hot drinks, and avoid blowing your nose for as long as possible. Just now that the bleeding stopped, we don't want to stop that clotting factors. Yeah. Okay, so if you're happy to stay at home and get someone to look after you, yeah? Yep, yep, we're good. Yep. Yep. Can you pass me the non-transport checklist, please? Yeah. <coughs> and the advice sheet we've got there. Okay, so That's we're just going to go... Oh, this for me. Okay, yeah? cool. We're just going to go through this with you to make sure that you're happy with us. Okay, so you've been fully assessed. Uh, can you do another set of vitals for us? Okay. Yes. 100%. Um, and, sure, yes. and there was no... First, we got vital signs were not abnormal, so we're happy. Yeah, you're happy for, to believe I'm here as well? I'm happy, yes. Yep. Okay, and we've excluded any serious yeah. injury. There's no C-spine tenderness, there's no pain, anything, no? Okay, we don't have red flags, but there haven't been anything abnormal, so we're happy with that. Um, once you've done that, we're just going to see if you're happy to mobilise and you're not dizzy or feeling sick from the weather. Stand yeah, up. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and, and there's someone that can stay with you and look after you, make sure there's care. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, and we're just going to finish our paperwork and make sure that's all fine. Yeah, I've got my mate just sitting over there. He can okay, look after me. Okay, he's happy to look after you. Perfect. Blood pressure remains unchanged. Cool, so your vital signs look good. Your yeah, heart rate is still at 80. Perfect. Okay, so when you're ready, I want you to take a couple of steps and yeah. make sure you don't feel dizzy or anything. You're all happy? Yeah, we're good, yep. Good? Good mobilising. Here's your non transport form. Oh, thank you, yep. Just have a read of it. Yeah. Yep. Alright, so if you're happy, we're happy to leave you here and. You're free to look after you. Cool, thank you. Right. Thanks for your help, guys. That's, That's right. right. That's what we're here for. Uh, hello, my name is Justin. This is my PBHC syncope OSCE. Um, hi, Megan. My name is Justin, and we've got Jeff over there. Um, hi. We've been calling to you today. You seem to have like fainting type syncope, if so. Um, is it okay if we just have a bit of a chat and look like look into what could have been going on? Um, and is it okay if Jeff does a full set of vital signs while I ask you some questions? Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bother your wrist, okay? Can I have back? Yes, you can. So first things first, have you ever had an episode uh, of this kind of thing before? Yeah. Collapse before? Yeah. Okay. Did and what did they follow that up in any way? They're still investigating it. Don't really know what's wrong. So, did anyone see this in the at all? Did anyone? Okay, so who's what's his name? His name's Matt. Yeah, Matt, you. Um, did she do any weird kind of like movements or prodromal symptoms prior to the sympathy? No, no, she just she did a lot of sleep. She was yep. up for five, ten seconds. And how would you describe her colour was as, as to now? Is she looking a bit better colour wise? Yeah, she's definitely uh, regained a lot of her colour. She's pretty pale. Right, right, that's, 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 that's a good sign. Um, and how how long do you reckon she was uh, unconscious for? Probably five to ten seconds. Five to ten seconds, and she woke up pretty quickly, came yeah. down normal. Yeah. Was there like a, did you, was there any state of confusion that you would have seen? Almost not not that I noticed. Not that you noticed. So she came back from consciousness and was quite alert, all with it pretty quick. Yeah. 
That's good. That's good. Um, and there were no obvious like prodromal symptoms no. beforehand. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take your blood pressure sitting down and we'll take it standing up and see if there's been a drop in your systolic or diastolic blood pressures, okay. which might indicate a postural hypertension, which could be a cause of your syncope as well. What does that mean? Um, that means that as you stand up, suddenly your systolic blood pressure drops. Um, and if it drops about 20 millimeters of mercury, um, that can be classed as postural hypertension. Or if your diastolic okay. drops by 10, uh, that also could be indicative of postural hypertension. It just means there's a, a lack of blood flow to the brain, your cerebral perfusion pressure, um, and basically your body's response to that is um, collapsing. Yeah. I'm just going to take your blood sugar, is okay? Yeah, okay. yeah cool. Um, so what Jeff's doing is he's just ruling out a number of other things that possibly could be cool. causing um, the, the syncope or the dizziness type episode. Okay. Um, but in the annual service, we uh, have a thing called the red flag system. Um, it's basically for us when you have a type of a kind of an acute uh, medical event like this, we can rule out some of the more severe things that could be underlying this. Um, given your age uh, and gender, you're probably like it's quite likely to be happening around. So you said you were 20, is that right? Yeah. And yeah, anywhere between 15 to 20 is when they start happening. And you said one happened before. Okay. Okay. Um, how old was how old were you when the first one happened? Um, 17, I think. 17. So that could be quite uh, quite normal for someone around your age. Um, any chance you might be pregnant? Uh, so quite a, don't think so. Don't think so? Um, that's okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab the red flag checklist and we're going to work through it. I'm going to ask you some questions about it um, and rule out everything on that checklist. That's okay? Yeah. Right. So, um, First things first, Jeff, were there any um, abnormal vital signs? No, there were no, no abnormal vital signs. Is it okay if we take your blood pressure one more time when you're standing up? <coughs> um, while she's doing that, I'll just okay, accept. Just stand up whenever you're ready. Let me know if you feel dizzy at all when you stand up. Do I feel okay? Yeah, okay. that's so good. Just, let me borrow your arm again, okay? Okay. okay. And Matt, when she fell, did she hit a heat or anything? No other didn't injury? Seem like it. Didn't fell, seem like fell it. Fell onto carpet. Fell onto carpet, didn't hit a heat or anything like that. No other signs of injury or anything? No, like I said, she came around. Came around pretty good. good. Um, any pain in your neck? No. Um, and this is another weird question. Your tongue, did you, sore tongue at all? Did you bite your tongue maybe when you went down? No. No. Okay, that kind you. of might be indicative that she might have had a seizure when she yeah, collapsed. Yeah, she and there was no movement of her arms or limbs no. when she collapsed? No. Okay. There was no change. Okay, that's good. Um, no change, so it's most likely not going to be postural hypertension because we would see a drop of 20 in your systolic or 10 in your diastolic. Okay. Um, have we got a 12 litre ECG we can do? Uh, yep, I've already acquired one. You've acquired one? Yep. Uh, what did that show? It showed just the normal sinus. Normal sinus for them. So, because it's really important to rule out any underlying cardiac causes, um, especially like maybe a congenital cause that you've grown up with that might be causing um, your syncopes. Um, you're not sure of breath at all at the moment, you're feeling quite comfortable, that's good. Um, and you've got no neck pain or anything like that. Okay, so she didn't sustain any injuries when you fell to hit her head. Um, and you were just in class kind of all day, kind of hot day, kind of yeah. no real... I forgot to have lunch, so... Yeah, and there was no real like exertion, you weren't like weightlifting or anything crazy like that, no. Walked up a couple flat stairs, that's about it. That's about it, okay, that's good. And you said you weren't <coughs> pregnant? No, don't okay, know that's that. good. Um, and in terms of, you know, no headache at all? No, no headache, no throbbing pains in your head? Okay, because that might indicate potentially uh, something wrong um, neurologically, might result in a bleed for the brain, putting pressure that might cause a syncope. So that would associate with a headache. Um, and you've got no kind of heart defects or congenital problems that you might know of? No, no. Okay, so that rules out the initial red flag. So that means there's no real need for us right now to, to take you to hospital in the ambulance. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll just get Jeff to start writing a form for us and I'll discuss yeah. through the last couple of red flags. So it's just an ACS form. Just basically write some notes about what we've done in the scene um, and some advice for Megan. Um, and then I'll talk through these last orange flags. Okay, here's your form. Um, so you're over 16, which is good. Um, it doesn't look like postural hypertension, um, which is another one of the old orange flags. So when you stand up, your, your cardiac output drops and that's causing the faint. So you've been able to stand up and you haven't re-fainted, which is good. Um, another quite personal family question. You've had no family history of any one of your family was suddenly kind of passing away? Uh, no sudden no, death in the family? Okay, so. that's good. 
and given your age, I doubt there's any history of heart failure. So I would most likely say this is probably like a benign type cause. Um, it could have been caused by kind of prolonged standing and then you kind of have an eating, so your, your blood pressure is probably a little bit low, you've collapsed. Um, and you've, there was no provoking factors though, um, or prodromal symptoms, um, which would be more likely to be benign. Um, would you say you were quite feeling a bit sweaty, a bit hot maybe before you fainted? Um, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's quite often before, a, that's quite normal before a faint to feel a bit dizzy or hot and a bit flushed. Yeah. Um, which is also good, which is a green flag. So, so here's the form. Yeah. So this is what we call an ACS sheet. Um, this has got a uh, address that you can head onto a website and pull up our paperwork. Um, also, if symptoms seem to persist, uh, persist um, and you might have another faint or anything happen, um, head off to your GP to see them. But currently, because there's only there's no green, there's no red or orange flags, there's no direct need to go see anyone in the next day or two. However, if symptoms persist, um, take that sheet along and head to your GP and see if you can get it further investigated. Um, this is on an information sheet. Yeah, this is, it's just an information sheet around syncopes. Um, it just talks about basically some of the risks around them, some symptoms to watch out for, um, the prodromal symptoms, which is basically the symptoms before the event, they yeah. precede the event, um, and those are the symptoms to watch out for. Okay. So are you happy with um, all the assessment that we've done today, or is there any concerns you still might have about it? Uh, no, I think no. it's alright. You're okay. Um, what we'll do one last time is we'll go through our non-transport checklist. Yeah. Um, we might be able to get one more set of items and we'll observe you for a bit. Um, yeah. See if we can get some water, um, some food, maybe see if we can stop it happening again. Um, take it easy for the rest of the day. I'll just pull up the non-transport checklist in general. Uh, this is for all the patients that we leave at home. Basically just mit mitigates any risk of... Um, so I'm just going to take all your risk again, okay? I'm missing anything. Right. So I'll talk through with my with my partner with this so make yeah. sure we're both on the same page. So I believe Megan today has been fully assessed with yeah. assessed her background, her history leading up to the event and prior, um, which is good. Now the vital signs came back abnormal. Uh, we've been able to exclude serious injury. You had a normal temperature, so been been well over the last couple of days. Yeah. Yep. Okay, um, no red flags or orange flags were present. Um, most likely to be just a benign cause. Um, once Jeff's finished that, we'll just get you to take another couple of steps, make sure you can mobilise and that you're feeling okay to do that. Or oh, sweet. Um, we're going to leave you in the capital of your boyfriend, confident yeah. adult to look after you over the next couple of days. Sorry. Um, and we've left you with that AC sheet and that's going to be linked to all our paperwork. So we'll just get you to take a couple of steps up and make sure that you're all good standing up and make sure you can mobilise. How's that feel? I feel fine. Cool. Oh, cool. Oh, well, thank you very much for watching. So my treatment plan for Megan uh, currently didn't involve any pharma pharmacological interventions given the fact that um, she had no symptoms that need managing. However, um, we could offer symptomatic treatment given the fact she might have had low blood pressure, so it might have been appropriate to give fluids, but her vital signs were all normal. She wasn't feeling nauseous or in dizziness. So there's no need to give any medications for that reason. Um, my management plan and the continuation of care for her was to basically monitor the symptoms, utilise the syncope um, uh, information sheet uh, to go see her GP again if she does continue to continue to get these syncopes um, and to monitor and look after herself a little bit there. Um, I made sure she understood the plan and made sure she was able to repeat back to me what um, the plan was to do about if any symptoms were to continue. Um, I ensured to do a full thorough assessment to rule out any priority symptoms um, and make sure I go over all my non-transport checklist and red flags so it's ensured that she's safe to be left with a competent adult.